Good morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hallelujah. Bless you, God. Father, I exalt you. I praise your holy name. Because you alone are worthy of all the glory, of all the honor, and of all the praise. I worship you today, God. As long as there is breath in my body, I will worship you, Father. Good morning, Sister Cynthia. <laughs> Pastor Cynthia. I gotta make some adjustments here. <laughs> hmm. Hallelujah. I, I'm so blessed that, you know, um, you and your husband were able to jump on with me and my husband. That was awesome. You were quiet. <laughs> but I told my husband, I said, she's, she's quiet. She's more on the reserve side. Maybe, maybe that's the calm before the boom. <laughs> right? <laughs> I don't know. It was an awesome time. I so enjoyed that, you know. And um, I'm so glad you guys have that ministry out there. Like, I didn't realize that was going on. That's what I mean is when we connect with each other and we know what we're doing, you know, it's it's awesome because then we, we, we can say to somebody who lives out there or who's looking for a church out there or just a place to, you know, to get counsel, to get, because sometimes that's all we need, right? We need somebody to talk to so we can be encouraged in our faith or you know, we need prayer. We need somebody to pray for us. Amen. And, um, and local people have a way of reaching local people. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yes, it was awesome. It's awesome. I'm sure that's not going to be the last time. <laughs> I'm thinking God's doing something different and making some changes. And again, I mean, speaking to me about some things and so I'm just waiting on God to see where he goes with it. Amen. Sometimes we think that we got to depend on others for our ministry and for what we're doing and, and waiting for somebody to call us to speak, waiting for, you know, all this stuff to happen. Yet God is the one that, um, that, moves us from glory to glory, right? He's the one that causes things to happen. He's the one that opens doors that no man can close. So as long as we're waiting on him, it's all good, right? <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right. Well, welcome to Women of War Mornings with God. Um, I have a, hello Pia, welcome, welcome. I have a, a word today. <laughs> this is speaking to me, okay? Uh, speaking to me, truly. Um, um, so the first scripture I'm going to read from is 2 Peter. 2 Peter, no, 1 Peter, sorry. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. And this is, this is Peter giving us instruction. It says, be sober. That doesn't mean don't get drunk. <laughs> Being sober here means to be awake, be mindful, be aware, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring, is a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. So Peter's telling us here, you got to be on guard. You got to be vigilant because the adversary, your enemy, the devil, he is like a roaring lion as a roaring lion. So he isn't, he's as one, right? The imitator. And he walks about seeking whom he can devour. So he's looking, he's looking for someone or some ones. He's always looking. And then I'm going to pop backwards to James chapter 4, verse 7, that says, sub, and this is James giving us instruction, submit yourself, therefore, to God, resist the devil, 
and he will flee from you. So we have to submit, right? We have to submit. We have to be sober. We have to be vigilant. We have to submit. And then go over to Luke chapter 10, verse 19. And this is Jesus giving us instruction. It says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Amen. Mm. If we think about that for a while. God has given us, Jesus says here, he's given us all the power to tread upon the enemy, basically. And, um, and he gives us instruction on how to do it. Sorry, I'm writing stuff down. Hi, babe. Good morning. My, my. So let's talk about that a little bit. Remember when Jesus went into the wilderness? I think everybody knows the story. He was in the wilderness 40 days, 40 nights. He was tempted by the devil and all this stuff, right? <clears throat> and when Jesus returned from the wilderness, if you pay attention to the Gospels, he moved in power. He moved in authority. And, you know, like, what do I mean by that? So he, he had authority over sickness. He had authority over the demons. I mean, sickness, he healed the sick. How many, right? Authority over the demons. How many times <laughs> would the demons come out and scream at him? I mean, they would say, Jesus, what do you have to do with us? It's not it's not our time. It's not your time yet, you know, and, or the ones that jumped into the, send us into the swine, into the swine and, and all the demons jumped into the swine and then they ran over the cliff. I mean, they ran from Jesus. The demons ran from Jesus. They recognized him and they, they were afraid. They recognized his authority. They recognized the power that he walked in, the power and authority that he walked in. I mean, come on. Jesus even had power over death. He had power and authority over death. When he said, Lazarus, come forth. And he did. And that was just to show, he says in his word, that was to show the people. That was to show them God's power. That was to show them. That was to glorify God in what happened with Lazarus. Jesus had authority and power over the weather. You know, he was in the boat and it was rocking. That wasn't the only time. There were several times, Jesus, do you not care that we are going to perish? His disciples said. And what, oh, he, what did he say? He stood up and he said, be still. Two words. And he went back and laid down. He said, oh, ye of little faith. You know, I mean, Jesus knew his power and his authority and he walked in it. He wasn't afraid to walk in it. Amen. He walked in his power and his authority. You know, when the Bible tells us here, when Jesus says, behold, I give unto you, then he's giving us. He is giving us what? What is he giving us? Power to tread upon serpents and scorpions. Well, what does that mean? Serpents and scorpions to me, like back in the beginning when Adam and Eve were in the garden and it says the serpent came. Everybody thinks it's a snake. The Bible doesn't say snake. It says serpent. So the serpent came and tempted her, right? So to me, when Jesus is referring to serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, serpents and scorpions, to me, it's, it's, it's demons, basically, is what it what it makes me think of. It's the demons. It's it's things like sickness, and disease, and demonic oppression, and all these things that were, you know, that we fight against the principalities and powers and rulers of darkness. That's the serpents and the scorpions, you know. And it says and over all the power of the enemy. So we know now that Jesus Himself. Jesus himself has given us the power over all sickness, all disease, all death, 
all oppression, depression, um, you know, power over the weather. I mean, we have power over these things because why? Because Jesus gave it to us. Amen. He gave it to us. And nothing, 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 not one thing <laughs> shall by any means hurt you. Amen. Good morning, Nalani. So what do we have to be? What do we have to do? We have to be vigilant. We have to be sober and we have to submit to God so that we can move in this power that Jesus talks about. So we can tread upon the serpents and scorpions. So we can tread upon all sickness. So we can tread upon all disease. So we can tread upon the spirit of death. So we can tread upon poverty. So we can tread upon depression. So we can tread upon oppression. All of these things so that we can tread upon them. Because Jesus has given us the power to do so. And over all the power of the enemy. Amen. So we got to be vigilant. We got to be sober. We got to submit ourselves to God. You know, Jesus left us the power. He didn't just say, okay, well, here's the power. All right, grab a hold of it. Where What power? The power that resides on the inside of us is the dunamis power of God. And I said this yesterday, it's God himself. We sometimes think, I think we think sometimes, or people have the thought that, you know, God, the Father, and Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, you know, they're all different. They are all separate for a reason. The Father, mm, El Elyon, he sits in the heavens. He was, he's the creator of all heavens all heaven and the earth. Jesus was the word of God that became flesh and dwelt among us. Amen. The Holy Spirit is that power, that dunamis power of God that resides on the inside of us. The Holy Spirit was left to come and comfort us, to live on the inside of us when Jesus left. That power, that Holy Spirit that lives on the inside of us is God himself. That's why people say, Jesus was 100% God, yet 100% man. He was 100% God. He was the word that God spoke in the beginning. Let there be light, and light was. There was no question about it. Jesus didn't, yeah, God didn't sit there thinking, hmm, uh, let there be light. Oh, shucks. No light. Let me try again. Let there be light. Mm hmm. Oh, gosh, only light over there. Um, no, that is not what God did. He said with power and authority, let there be light. He didn't have to yell it. He didn't have to scream it. He knew his power and his authority because God is all powerful. He is the all powerful God. And he said, let there be light and light was. That same power Jesus had, the Holy Spirit, Jesus has, the Holy Spirit has, lives on the inside of us. That's why we always say words have power. That's why I always say we have to be intentional about our words. Because when they come spewing out of our mouth, it is a seed. Amen. And that seed will take root unless we uproot it by the blood of Jesus, put it under the blood. Amen. That's why we will stand accountable for every idle word that we speak. We've got to be mindful. We have to be mindful about our words. The devil, remember I said, and James, the devil roams around like as a roaring lion, seeking who he may devour. What does he roam around looking for? Our words. The devil can't read our mind, but he will take what we speak and he will use it. He also watches. He's watchful. He will watch to see. He knows our weaknesses because of what? Our reactions to things. Our reaction to things. Look, I'm going to be really transparent here. My frustrations, my frustration levels <laughs> when I can't get something done is like that big. You know the movie, Eight Seconds? Takes me about that. 
sometimes three. And mm, that that mm, rises in me, that frustration where I want to just lash out. And let me tell you, I'm working on it with the Holy Spirit, with the help of the Holy Spirit. I'm working on it because I'm the... I'm the one who wants something done and I want it done now. And sometimes it can't get done now. So let me give you an example. I ordered these French door curtains because our enclosed garage downstairs has French doors. Well, I didn't realize that the French doors were made of aluminum. <laughs> so the curtains came yesterday and I was excited because I want to put these up. You know, the kids are all coming on Sunday. I will have nine of my kids and grandkids and great grandkids here till the rest arrive on Tuesday. Then I'll have, I think, 13 of them here. I mean, so I'm trying to get these things done, right? Well, my husband goes with the drill to try to make a hole so we can, only to realize, oh, it's not wood. It's aluminum. So, hmm, I could not. <laughs> Put those curtains up on the French door. And then, okay, well, let's move along to the next side where the window is supposed to be. And right now it's just screen. And, and let's put the, you know, the other curtain up over there. And so, you know, we're working on that. And, and we put it up. And then, oh, the middle sags because it's a little wide. So we got to put that screw thing in the middle, you know, to hold it up. So I take the curtain down. And in order to... See where that thing has to go. I take, got to take the curtains off the rod again so I can put the rod up without the curtains so I can see where that hook needs to go to hold it up. By then, I'm pulling the curtains off because there's that frustration. The enemy knows. The enemy knows where I get frustrated. And so he's immediately there to attack, right? And my husband said, babe, let's... You want to do this tomorrow because you're getting frustrated already. I said, no, I don't want to do this tomorrow. I'm not getting frustrated. <laughs> and my answer was <laughs> frustration. <laughs> the tone, <laughs> you know, the way I answered. You could hear, I could hear the frustration. But see, I have been praying. Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, show me. Help me with these attitudes. Help me with, with this frustration. Show me where this root is so I can get it out, get it changed. Amen. And so when my husband spoke that, immediately the Holy Spirit said, stop. And I was able to stop. Bless God. Let me tell you what, that might not seem like nothing to y'all, but that's huge for me. <laughs> and I felt almost proud of myself that, wow, see, it was a choice. I could take authority over it. That little thing, that little fox in the hole that so easily besets me, like the sin that so easily besets us, I was able to take control. I was able to make the choice to take control. Why? Man, if we only realize the power and the authority that we walk in, now I have power over that little thing. Excuse me. I have authority over that frustration. Excuse me. But I have to make the choice. I have to choose to take authority. I have to choose to change my mind. I have to choose to renew my mind to know that I don't have to be frustrated. I have the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Amen. I have the fruit of the spirit on the inside of me. So whenever I speak, I should be speaking with that fruit, that fruit flowing out of my mouth like milk and honey. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Not always easy, right? But we have the power and the authority to do it. So even if we die, even if we die, we will rise with Christ. That's still, we've still won. Amen. We have still won. So today on this faith-filled Friday, I love Fridays, <laughs> on this faith-filled Friday, and you know what? In Maui, it's overcast. It's drizzling a little. So there's a little nip in the air. I love that kind of weather. I love that kind of weather. But anyway, here's what I want to encourage you to do. I want you to remember this. If you take away nothing else, I want you to remember this. I wrote this down, okay? It says, remember this, the strongest demons 
or even Satan himself mm -mm -mm, does not have as much power and authority as the weakest believer who is filled with the Holy Spirit. So even if we think, I I'm weak, you know, I've heard people say, I cannot, I cannot, I just cannot, you know, I I'm so weak, I don't have, I cannot. Oh, the devil's just attacking me, you know, glorifying the devil, he's just attacking me so hard. Even the weakest, even the person, the believer who thinks they are the weakest has more power and authority on the inside of them than Satan himself. So I encourage you today, be vigilant, be sober, submit yourself to God. Receive that power and that authority that Jesus has given unto us <laughs> to tread upon sickness and disease and fear and oppression and poverty and depression. Come on, let's do it. We, do, we can do it together. Let's do it. Because we have that dunamis power on the inside of us, on the inside of us. His name is Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Okay. Can you all see my link? Somebody tell me yes or no. Can you see my link today? <laughs> a couple of times I forgot to post the link. So, if you want... Okay, thanks, Sister Cynthia. If you want this power... If you want this authority, if you want to walk in it, you got to be born again. What does it mean to be born again? It means to confess your sin and to ask Jesus into your heart. And if you want that, click on the link that I have. It will take you to my webpage, to my salvation tab. tab. Pray that prayer. I have the sinner's prayer there. Pray that prayer. It has a scripture to encourage you. And then get hooked up with a local church. It has that on there as well. Um, if you don't know a local church, then you can message me back here. Or you can message me from my website. It'll come to me in the form of an email. And um, I will try to find a church that's nearby. And you can go get hooked up. Amen. We need each other. We need to stay hooked up. We need to pray for one another. We need to stand with one another in faith. Amen. We need to be vigilant and sober and submit ourselves to God. Because we have all power over the enemy. Amen. Amen. All right. Be blessed, you guys. Have an amazing, miracle-filled day and weekend <laughs> and i will see you all back here again on monday mornings with god at 7 a.m i love you guys thanks for jumping on